Good morning, folks. We begin at spaceweathernews.com to take a peek in on our star at 193 angstroms of light. As advised in yesterday's upload, the destabilization of the southwestern filament progressed to completion and he exploded out into space. Let's take a peek in a couple of different wavelengths, starting in 304. Watch how the southward release jerks the wheel and sends the plasma off to the right. Due to the position of the filament on the departing edge of the Earth-facing disk, and because it released down and then away, there is very little chance that Earth will receive a significant impact from it. The mass is mostly going to miss our planet. Despite a strong filament release, solar flaring remains very low. We've got bright umbral field loops indicating sunspots are here, but the Earth-facing quiet has won the battle for days on end now. Both groups have a high umbral population, but both are primarily spread magnetically, with only sparse interaction potential in the centers of the groups. The solar wind speed in yellow continues dropping, and so those density jolts in orange only plant minor jolts in the KP index. We are calm here at Earth, both up high and down below as a lot of pressure released over the last five days with that northern coronal hole. Last day only saw one significant event, an eruption in Azerbaijan. Top news begins here at Earth where a new paper describes the ground-based detection of thundercloud-driven terrestrial gamma flashes. These little understood atmospheric energetic phenomena are a new addition to the ever-growing list of underappreciated energetic events in meteorology. Next, we update the impending collision of mainstream science and the new electric universe theories. Many elements of classical and quantum physics gain purity with the presence of noise, which appears could be a subtle energy flow throughout the entire universe. These scientists are looking at the cosmic microwave background as the culprit, but that's just their best guess within the mainstream realm. Vacuum energy and large-scale electric fields may provide better explanations for the phenomenon, and either way, this force is conjectured to cause self-organization and matter. Whoa. The largest solar system ever discovered is just a few dozen parsecs away. A Jupiter-sized planet is orbiting 7,000 AU from its parent star. Our solar system is mostly confined to less than 50 AU. We've seen exoplanets hundreds of AU away. But 7,000 AU is a new level of huge, and given that its closeness to our solar system is likely why we noticed it, this means that huge systems may be common in the galaxy, and there may be much larger systems out there as well. This has enormous implication for Shoal Star, the only known candidate for a planet X crossing through our solar system in the past, detailed in my presentation from observing the frontier in Pittsburgh, a planet crossed. This more than doubles the chances of a peripheral system interaction having inner heliospheric dynamical interactions as well. I'm off to Phoenix for the conference this weekend. Remember folks, morning news will be posted, might be a touch later with the time zone change. And if you are set to come, make sure your stuff is in order, observers. I'll see you in the desert. We've got the Weather Channel spring forecast, pressure and radar forecast at Windy TY, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Oh, <laughs>